Hello everyone, welcome to another edition of the Ohio Guys here. I'm your host, Christian Ocampo here, and today I'm being joined by Elizabeth Maxwell. How are you doing, Hi. Elizabeth? I'm wonderful. It's a little uh, cold and rainy over here in Austin, Texas right now, but the inside of my apartment is bright and cheery. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm glad you are staying warm somehow. <laughs> So, uh, I want to thank you for joining us. Uh, we have a few que questions we'd like to ask you. Uh, first one, how, what's it like working in the industry today? Uh, a dream come true. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, it's, uh, it's really amazing. Um, I, there's a quote, I can't remember who said it, which is like, find what you love to do and then find somebody to pay you to do it. And um, I was really lucky that I was able to make that happen. <laughs> um, it's a good time to be in the industry. Um, I think that as opposed to like 10 years ago, um, voice actors uh, are more well known by fans and there's a lot more potential for interaction and so forth. Um, and uh, it's a growing and emerging industry. So I'm really excited to kind of see where it's going to go from here. Um, but yeah. Um, and also the other thing I like is the voiceover industry is still small enough that I actually feel like I get to know so many people who are working in it. Um, and it feels like a much tighter knit, closer group, like industry group than say the on-screen like acting world. Um, so that's kind of like a cool plus. When I go to conventions, I feel like I'm getting to meet all sorts of new friends and fans, and then I'm getting to like hang out with all my old like voice actor friends too. So. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So what is your favorite show you have worked on? Man, this question is like being asked, like, which is your favorite child? Exactly. <laughs> um, I've been fortunate enough that all of the shows where I played main characters, I've had really amazing experiences. If I had to pick a couple standouts out of the hat, um, working on um, Rooster Teeth's show, Ruby was amazing, um, and it was kind of cool because in between the time that I auditioned and was cast, I became a fan of the show, so it meant a lot more to me when I got cast, um, but I also worked on another 2D show of theirs called Camp Camp. Um, I don't know if you've heard of it, Christian. Um, it's really funny. It's kind of like, it's more adult humor. It's kind of like... Um, a little bit like the South Park or Simpsons where it's about kids, but it's not necessarily intended for a young audience. It's more adult humor. Um, and I got to originate my character on that show from the very beginning and have a lot of like creative input into her. So that was a really cool experience. Um, Noragami is also one that I think will kind of like forever stay in my heart. Um, because I became, A, it's one of the most emotional shows that I've ever worked on and required some of the most of me acting-wise. And um, through that process, I also became really good friends with Caitlin Glass, the director. Um, and that was, like, a really incredible experience. So that, that will always kind of be one of my standout animes that I've worked on. Nice. All right, since we mentioned Noragami, what was it like working on that show? Um, <laughs> it was like running a marathon sometimes. No, it was, um, it was amazing. I love that show. Anyone who's watching and you haven't seen it, I highly recommend it, particularly Noragami Aragoto, which is the second season. Um, but... Bishamon, my character, uh, goes through such an intense emotional journey. And I'm one of those actors, maybe there are other actors out there that, that can do it a different way, but I kind of have to go through what my character's going through in order to give a good performance. So 
I mean, there were times where I would be like in the booth, like sobbing and Caitlin would be having to bring me more tissues because I'd used up the whole box of tissues in the booth. And, um, it was a really rewarding experience. So I love all anime. I love comedic anime. Um, but I kind of felt like in the world of anime that, that Noragami was like me giving my like Oscar performance. <laughs> <laughs> um, and like I mentioned earlier, I came out of it with some really incredible friends. Um, Caitlin and I became really close. Um, it gave me more of a chance. I've, I'd already be, been friends with Jason Liebrich, too, with Yato, but we became closer through working on that show together, and I got to know Micah a lot better as well, who plays Yato, and, or not Yato, I'm sorry, um, um, Yukide. And he is an amazing individual. Um, if you haven't checked out his art, he's also an artist. Go look him up on Instagram. He's amazing. <laughs> Sorry, I, I like plugging all of my friends. Yeah, that's, that's great. <laughs> shout out to all of them. Uh, another shout out I'll mention is to Rooster Teeth. Since you just mentioned Ruby, what was it like working on that show? Well, I kind of just mentioned it, but um, it's kind of a funny story because when I was asked to audition for the show, I hadn't actually heard of it. And I was staying in New York with one of my best friends, just visiting him. And he's a big anime fan, too. We've watched a lot of anime together. And I was like, hey, do you want to just check out an episode or two of the show with me? I have to audition for it, and I want to kind of know, like, what it's about, the style. So we put on the very first episode of Ruby. And I don't even think we got through the opening credits. And we, like, looked at each other, and we're like, binge watch? Binge watch. <laughs> and we like sat down and watched the entire first season in one go. And um, I mean, we were obsessed. Uh, I think the entire rest of the trip, we listened to the Ruby soundtrack like nonstop. Um, so I got really emotionally invested in the show before I even auditioned for it. And uh, I didn't find out for a month that I booked winter, which is actually a pretty long time in the realm of voiceover. Usually you find out like sooner when you audition for something. So I, I was really a little depressed because I wanted to be in the show so bad. And I kind of resigned myself to the fact that I didn't get the role. And then when gray emailed me and told me, I, uh, I was pretty, <laughs> pretty excited. Um, but, uh, as far as working on it, um, I can say that one of the most, special show is that the fans on that show are unlike any I have ever encountered and it has been so I felt so lucky and it's been so gratifying to get to interact with them um because to me there's like kind of nothing more beautiful than somebody that feels really passionately about something um so getting to be a part of the Ruby family and getting to like experience like the love and the passion of the fans is one of my favorite parts of of it <laughs> <laughs> nice uh next question and here's a big one what was it like working on attack on Titan? oh my gosh well i don't know if you know this christian um i've told this a couple times like this story a couple times at con so a lot of people know that was actually my very first anime that i ever worked on um, so, needless to say, it was nerve-wracking. Um, I mean, the more that I do this, obviously, the more comfortable you get and the more confident you get, but, oh my gosh, working on that show, that first session, I was so nervous, and dear Mike McFarland was so good to me, um, he will forever be one of my favorite people in the world because he kind of took my hand and walked me into this world of anime voice acting. Um, but that was another show. I wasn't familiar with it before I started working on it. And um, I watched the whole season after, um, I think I watched some of it before I dubbed and then all of it after I dubbed. And 
I can honestly say that objectively speaking, it's probably one of the best animes I've ever worked on. And it's really cool to be a part of something like that where even not as a performer, I can like appreciate what an incredible show it is. Um, and I am so excited for season two. Yeah. It's coming right up. Um, but I'm sure uh, it's also one of uh, the most, well, that's actually not true. Amir didn't have to yell that much in that show. But I remember watching the show and just feeling a great amount of empathy for my fellow voice actors because, guys, screaming is not easy. <laughs> um, screaming is an art. And uh, there is a lot of it on Attack on Titan. So whenever you hear those, Attack on Titan screams. Thank the throats of your of your voice actor. <laughs> <laughs> well, do. Uh, now it's time for a little funny question. We ask mm -hmm. all the voice actors. If you can be any character you have played in real life, who will you be and you can mix and match? Oh my gosh. This is a tough question because so many of the characters I've played are kind of... Uh, a lot of them are like villains or have met terrible ends. <laughs> um, I've always been a bit fascinated with time travel. So I feel like Motoko from Ghost in the Shell Arise might be a strong contender because I would freaking love to see what the future looks like. And... Um, uh, I've always been a huge fan of like kind of like cyberpunk and sci-fi and that stuff. So getting to experience what that feels like to be connected and plugged in like that. Um, who else would I want to be? There are a lot of video game characters that I've voiced that I really wouldn't mind uh, being because of the superpowers. <laughs> um you know, Phoebe from Battleborn that I've always had to tell me. Um, who else? Is there anyone else? So many of my characters have so many sad, emotional lives. Um, it would be pretty amazing to live in the world of Remnant. I don't think I'd actually want to be in the military, so in that sense, I don't know if I would uh, want to be Winter, but... <laughs> Um, <laughs> it'd be pretty cool to, uh, to live in that world for a while. Um, All right. That worked. <laughs> uh, <laughs> not sure you worked on. What was that working on Overlord? Uh, I probably laughed in the booth the most while filming that show. It's pretty outrageous. Uh, it's a really good show. That's one show um, I almost always try and watch um, through all the animes that I dub before I do it. But because of um, some stuff I had going on with my schedule, uh, timing-wise, I was not able to watch Overlord before I dubbed it. Or not all of it, anyways. I think I watched the first episode or two. And um, I was constantly pleasantly surprised throughout the entire process, like, how good the actual anime is. Um, but playing Albedo was pretty pretty hilarious um I don't know if I myself have ever been that obsessed with somebody in my entire life so it was pretty funny and fun to get to play someone who is that like blinders obsessed with one person and uh the scenes where she gets caught like cuddling in bed with like a life-size body pillow of mamanga that she herself made um, I remember it took forever to actually record that scene because Kyle Phillips, the director, and I uh, couldn't stop, like, busting up uh, throughout the recording, so we weren't getting, like, clean takes. Um, so, yeah. <laughs> All right, and uh, the next one. What was it like working on Ghost in the Show Arise? Um, that was a major milestone for me. Um, 
Ghost in the Shell, the movie, was the very first anime I ever saw in my life as, like, a young 11-year-old Elizabeth. Um, and I grew up watching Ghost in the Shell and listening to Mary Elizabeth McGlynn. So it was both kind of like Attack on Titan, really nerve-wracking, because I knew the kind of, like, dynasty that I was stepping into and that I had, like, really big shoes to kind of fill. Um but it was also like a huge personal and professional honor to kind of at such an early point in my career be entrusted with such an iconic character like Motoko and then getting to essentially follow in the footsteps of somebody that I really respected and loved growing up. Um, yeah. It is kind of one of those, like like I said with Noragami, there are a couple animes I worked on towards the beginning of my career that I think I will always remember. And Ghost in the Shell is, without a doubt, one of them. Um, <laughs> and getting to listen to Christopher Sabat in my ear as Bato all the time was pretty entertaining as well. <laughs> He's the king of leaving bombs. Um, have you ever heard of that term, Christian? I have. Maybe. Yeah, we. Uh, there are certain voice actors at Funimation that are particularly good at it or are particularly prolific, and um, Sabbath is one of them, and he usually recorded before me, so I was privy to quite a number of them while I was recording. <laughs> <laughs> well, I bet. <laughs> All right, uh... Is there anything else I could plug in this time, or is there any other show you want to they can, that you can talk about? Ooh, let's see. This is always so hard because most of this stuff is so tightly under wraps. Um, I mean, I can tell you I've got some really exciting um, announcements that I'm going to get to make in the coming months uh, in the world of gaming, um, also in the world. In the, um, I know most of you who are listening to this probably aren't as familiar with my TV and film career, but um, I have some really exciting news on that front that I'll be getting to share in a couple months too. Um, I know, I'm trying to think of like, we just wrapped Show by Rock. Um, I think Garo Crimson Moon, which I am in as Izumi, is playing right now. I'm sure most of you know that Attack on Se Attack on Titan Season 2 will begin dubbing shortly here. Although I don't actually know if um, I'm almost... I, my instinct, this is not official news, but my instinct is that it will be a simulcast. But I don't know that for certain. Um, what else can I talk about? <laughs> for my MOBA fans, I just voiced a bunch of new characters on Smite. Um, Nike and uh, the first god in the new Celtic pantheon that they're doing. Uh, she's called the Morrigan. Um, is there anything else I can talk about at the moment? I don't think so. But stay tuned. Um, I uh, Twitter is uh, usually the first place that I announce things. You can find me. Um, my handle is about Elizabeth M. Um, and Instagram is also another good place to keep uh, keep in touch. Uh, my handle on there is just Elizabeth Maxwell. Um, Facebook I kind of keep more personal um, than professional. But, um, yeah, I think that's all I can talk about right now, unfortunately. Yeah. It's like one of those questions where you're just like, oh, I have so much I want to say, but yes. I, would, I would be castrated if I did. NDAs, Let, yeah. Laid and left out for the crows. So you really uh, mentioned the Facebook and Twitter. So mm -hmm. uh, I think we just skip that one and just end it here. So again, thank you for sparing us your time for the interview. We really appreciate it. Absolutely. I hope I get to meet you guys in person one day. Yeah, we hope so too. <laughs> <laughs> and also wanna thank, I want to thank the fans too for watching this interview we all appreciate it thank you all and I hope you guys are enjoying our little contact, content here so we, I'm signing off here thank you my name is Christian Ocampo I'm Elizabeth Maxwell 
and we will all see you next time. Bye-bye.